hands up all those people who've heard of CSIRO. You know, CSIRO, Australia's own scientific and industrial research organisation. It's our very own scientific and industrial research organisation. So why do we need one of those? Everyone knows that all the good ideas come from overseas. Well, amazingly, Australians have lots of good ideas. And some smart person some 60 years ago said, why don't we put all these clever people together and see if they can solve some of our problems? So away they went. And in lots of areas of endeavour, they've come up with some great workable ideas. They've developed one of the world's first digital computers. You know, those little things you carry around to add up the shopping. The only miscalculation was they made it the size of your kitchen. They invented pigment emulsified creosote. Now, while that may not mean a lot to you, if you were a builder, you'd be shouting it from the rooftops. Because it stops timber from rotting and it even stops termites. How about a compact electron multiplier? What do you mean you've never heard of it? OK, if you're into mass spectrometry, medicine and space technology, then this is a must. Did you know that the Australian knitting industry is saving itself a tidy $100 million a year because CSIRO developed a faster and cheaper method of spinning worsted weaving yarns called... Cyro Spun. Of course you did. Ha, ah, but I'll catch you out on this one. Bet you don't know what a jumping gene is. Very funny. No, it's about using transposable DNA elements to introduce new desirable characteristics into crops like maize using genetic engineering. Didn't know that, did you? Question four. Describe the unique relationship between the Sepik River in Papua New Guinea and a Brazilian weevil. <laughs> Give up. The weevil killed off a dreaded weed called Salvinia that was not only choking the river, but making it very hard to get a decent bath. Guess whose idea that was? Yep, CSIRO. Here's another one. How do you end up with twice as many lambs as sheep without buying them at the sale yards? <coughs> Firstly, you make sure they're all used. Then you give them a shot of a vaccine called Fecundum. And five months later, bingo, you've got heaps of twins. Now, maybe it doesn't mean much to city dwellers or the sheep, but it means a great deal to Australia's farmers. And guess what? Right, CSIRO invented it. They also have this thing called VLSI. Now, most of you know what that means, of course, but for those of you who are ignorant, it means very large scale integration. So now you know it, it sort of makes you feel better somehow, doesn't it? VLSI has meant the development of a super silicon chip with 100,000 transistors which can be programmed to suit specific tasks in high technology manufacturing. Bum, 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 bum. Well, now we've got you interested, we'll let fly with a few statistics about the troops. The people who work their little hearts out developing all these fantastic ideas. Ready? OK. Now, because there are so many of them involved in such diverse projects all over Australia and in close contact with heaps of colleagues OS, they constitute a very big think tank. So they can very easily apply their minds to all sorts of problems. And they do. They are constantly in touch with each other and with Australia's primary and secondary industry to monitor and apply their ideas very tidy really but then what else would you expect from such a dynamic and efficient bunch of people and now we come to the interesting bit how do these people go about identifying and selecting research which is relevant to Australia in the future what's in the community interest which sectors of Australia's economy indicate potential growth which projects will generate wealth for Australia which will provide more jobs? How about the export potential? How likely is the promise of a major scientific advance? Who will develop and market the end product if it is developed? 
What is the availability of resources and skills within the organisation? Each potential project is put through the ringer and only the most relevant survive. CSIRO's number one priorities include developing and encouraging the application of computer-based information technologies in all sectors of industry and the community, developing technologies that are widely applicable in the manufacturing industry, contributing to the management of Australia's precious resources, like its soil and water which are currently being seriously degraded, encouraging the development of an Australian space industry, and developing and applying biotechnological techniques to improve Australia's agriculture and create new manufacturing opportunities. Impressive stuff. And indicative of the effort that the organisation puts into ensuring that every one of the millions of dollars spent on research on behalf of the people of Australia is well spent and returns to the country where it profits in the form of workable ideas and products that Australian industry can pick up and develop to create new wealth and jobs for all Australians! Hang on, quiet, quiet, that's not all, now settle down. There are other priorities too. Like the control of plant diseases, improving the health of all Australians through research into nutrition. The CSIRO's track record is impressive. PSZ, are you with me? What? PSZ, partially stabilised zirconia. Oh, it's an important new ceramic product which is being developed and marketed by an Australian company. Another CSIRO development. Good heavens, there's more. Pulse dark welding systems. Electromagnetic monitors. Improved dairy and cheese making techniques. Five star design ratings for energy efficient home designs. And would you believe it, the identification of the structure of the influenza virus. Achoo, achoo. So there you are, folks. They're out there at CSIRO every day, working for Australia. Hey, what's that you're standing in? Is it a better Australia? I thank you.